Hello and welcome to uh, News Desk. Happy holiday as well. Uh, my name is Kimini Nyamani Amman. On the holiday edition of the program, we'll take a look at some holiday related issues. You may already know how the police is concentrated uh, its uh, policing program this Easter at Kweu. And uh, well, we, we, we are looking at other parts of the country how security arrangements have gone on so far in Kweu and, and what's happening to other parts of the country if all the police will concentrate on is, is Kweu. We also look at the NDC and uh, some and a group of persons who have decided to form some sort of uh, association for former flag bearer hopeful Dr. Ecospio Gabra. He's also come out strongly to condemn that action. We'll look into that matter as well. You may have heard also head of the institutional failure that is believed to be the cause of the many accidents on our road. This, I'm talking about the Soul Takers uh, investigative piece by Tiger, Tiger Eye uh, investigative outfit and we'll deal with that matter as well. But don't forget you can share your thoughts with me on our social media platforms. Join news on TV, on Facebook and on Twitter. I'll be so glad to share your thoughts with the rest of us here uh, in the community. I'll be right back. I'm glad you stayed on here. Now, the Ghana Police Service during this Easter festivity showed their heavy presence in the eastern regional town of Kweu, which is a major hub for the Easter celebrations in Ghana. Traders may have felt the pinch of their presence, and revelers might have felt safe with them in town. But the question is, did the police give similar attention to other parts of the country? Before we speak to the Public Relations Officer of the Ghana Police Service, DSP Sefas Aza, over the telephone, let's listen to how enthused he was at Kweu when he told us of their security arrangements. We have the visibility police personnel here. We have the public affairs department and we are setting up an exhibition at the center of um, uh, Empire or so around the roundabout. Uh, we have the motor traffic and transport unit personnel here to manage traffic within the Kwewu enclave. We want police visibility because it has been tried and tested that wherever there is police visibility, there is deterrence of crime or deterrence of criminals. Well, DSP Sefas Asa is over the telephone now. Uh, let's start off our conversation, DSP. Hello, DSP. Hello. L let's start off our conversation with how far uh, the security arrangements in Kweu uh, have helped with maintaining law and order. Mm, yeah. Uh now we are about winding down as far as the festivities on the mountain are concerned okay and i can say that it has been largely successful largely successful devoid of any serious incident uh, as far as crime is concerned with the exception of some traffic uh, accidents that we had motor traffic accidents uh, where we had about uh, uh, three, three accidents, uh, one being quite fatal. Uh, taking that one aside, you can say that uh, we never experienced or recorded any uh, serious crime. Uh, maybe the only thing that uh, we recorded are about five cases of uh, pickpocketing. And even in all those cases, uh, the perpetrators were arrested. And so largely, it has been successful, more successful than uh, we had it last year. Mm. But all of the concentration, uh, from what we know since uh, Easter began, was what, what, in Kweu. How about the other parts of the country, the other places where people converge to mark uh, the period? Yeah, the other parts of the country were equally... Uh, provided with security and protection, maintenance of law and order throughout the country. Uh, because uh, we recall that uh, 
uh, it is our responsibility to maintain law and order in the country. Uh, there was only the concentration on Kwewu uh, due to the peculiar nature of Kwewu during the Easter. But then that is what that other part of the country were left unattended. Uh, also aware that in the voter region uh, there, there are vigorous activities there and so there was police presence, police presence throughout the country. And as I speak, there's police, there's going to be, oh, there's police presence uh, in Accra at the BP uh, because people are going to take the day off to rest and maybe also make merry at the same time. So we have deployed a marine police unit at the various beaches to ensure that they provide protection at the beaches and then uh, safety at sea. And so it's not as if any place was left uh, unattended to all parts of the country were equally given the affairs uh, of uh, security. But uh, outside the eastern region, Kwewu specifically, and the beaches here in Accra, there are other places, very popular places, where persons visit uh, during the Easter period. For instance, in the Volta region, people visit the waterfall. In, in, in the Ashanti region, people uh, picnic around the Lake Bosom tree. How about those areas? Uh, there were specific directives from the police administration to all regional police commands, divisional police commands, and district police commands to put arrangements in place, security arrangements in place to handle all security concerns within their jurisdiction. And uh, uh, we, are, we, are, we are reliably informed that uh, the advice were heeded. Come again, DSP. I'm not sure I got your last line. Yeah, I'm saying that uh, our we we there was specific directives. Uh, there were specific directives from the police administration to all regional, divisional, uh, district and unit command to make arrangements, security arrangements to handle all security concerns within the jurisdiction. And we are reliably, reliably informed that uh, the advice proceeded and... We've lost the uh, DSC stuff as, as our brother. We've been talking about secure, general security over the Easter period. We started off with a rundown of the security situation in Kwewu, which is a major hub during the Easter season. We, we also came down to other areas of uh, the country where people would visit to mark the period uh, as to whether or not the police is providing similar uh, arrangements in those areas. But DSP is back over the telephone. So DSP, overall, what would be your assessment of security and, and people's behavior actually over the period? Uh, am I online? Yes, you are now. Yeah. Oh, my assessment of security. Uh, I will focus mainly on Peru for now because uh, uh, we are still taking reports from other parts of the country. Mm. Uh, generally, I know that other parts of the country too have been very quiet and uh, peaceful. But uh, using Peru as a reference point, I would say that uh, security has been up to scratch. Uh, events have moved on and gone on so peacefully. Uh, comparatively, this year has been better, and uh, people are praising us, especially in Kwewu. Uh, they are some founded by the heavy security presence and the effective maintenance of law and order. So generally, it has been so peaceful and successful. I see. And uh, DSV, in Kwewu, again, we've had stories of how uh, people uh, un unusually did things that were supposed to be done uh, elsewhere. Now, my question is, what, what, what then does, what is the police able to do about such a situation? Let me, let me say with all certainty that, uh, as what you are saying is concerned, the obscenity. Mm. Uh, this year can never be compared to last year. Uh, I didn't see much of, of obscenities uh, in Kwewu this time around. Uh, it was watered down completely. People were more, excuse me to say, for want of a better word, moral. 
and uh, I think that uh, nothing really uh, warranted any serious uh, uh, action as far as uh, uh, crime is concerned. Uh, what I can say is that people drank a lot, but uh, they mm. also acted within the compass right. of the law. Uh, although they were drunk, they, mm. they didn't really break the I law. See. D DSP, how long before your men withdraw from these areas you have taken them to? For as long as it would take revelers to come down to zero. I see. Uh, so as I speak, there are still police presence uh, in the still police presence in the And I even when things have come down to zero, we will still have to revise. We don't completely take off a... Uh, security will revise and uh, the Kwewu division will take over security and maintain some police presence until, until everything completely whittles down. So how can people within the community help the police in effectively playing this role of maintaining law and order uh, during this period and perhaps beyond? Uh, yes, they, they, they have a lot. Uh, let me say that this particular ISA, for instance, uh, all stakeholders came on board. The tourism uh, sector, uh, the traditional rulers, uh, the youth of Peru, uh, uh, motor unions, motor traffic, uh, and transport unions, and other people, all came together to ensure that... Uh, uh, we, we have a successful uh, Easter. Uh, we also ensure that uh, uh, during this time, we still start the public to also play their role as good citizens, to volunteer pieces of information on crime uh, to the police. I can even say with all conviction that the few uh, petty crimes that were recorded, it was some members of the public even have the police to defend at the arrest. So you could see that people were alive to their responsibilities as citizens. And the police emergency numbers were in handy uh, to, the, to the public, so they, they, they didn't find it difficult at all reaching the police via the emergency numbers. So that was a very commendable, and uh, we expect that it is carried on, this particular attitude is carried on throughout the year uh, by members of the public. DSP, mm. I'm, I'm going to have to say thank you very much uh, and happy holiday as well. Uh, thank you DSP very much. DSP as uh, joined us as we looked at security during the Easter uh, season here in Ghana. He spoke to us live from Kwewu. Now let's go on to some other matters. And former NDC flag bearer of Dr. Echo Spiel Gabra, has warned that the ruling NDC risks losing power in 2016 should the current administration fail. He suggested members of the party rally behind the president in order for him to make the current administration succeed. Responding to a Facebook campaign for him to contest in 2016, Dr. Ekosvio Gabra urged members of the NDC to rather support the president as that will go a long way to help the country. Dr. Spiagabra, who is currently in Tunis, working for the African Development Bank, has also dissociated himself from the fan page. He said he's minding his own business in that country and quoting him, uh, this is what he said, this is just to let you know that I do not know who are behind this group, as I rarely even visit Facebook and have not posted anything to any site there in at least three years, but his call uh, doesn't mean anything to the NDC. Uh, we are joined over the telephone by Member of Parliament for Keta and former Propaganda Secretary of the NDC, Richard Koshiga. Hello, Richard. Hello, good morning. Good morning and happy holiday, Richard. Thank to you. Richard, let's, let's first start off with your views on this on, on, on this uh, Facebook group. And, and their call for Dr. Echo Spiel Gabra to stand for flag bearership in 2016. What's been your own interpretation of this? Well, um, I think that the NDC is a democratic political party where um, various 
those groups and individuals may have their opinions and uh, interests as far as issues are concerned. So if there is a group uh, which is actually advocating for Dr. Ecosbill Cabra to run a flag bearer, well, that is their position. Nobody can begrudge them. Richard, but what would it be such a wise move for the NDC to come up with another flag bearer come 2016? From well, where you sit? This will not be the first time. The last time that President Miller played, um was running for the second term uh, in office to lead the NDC, he had, you know, a very prominent people also coming up to contest him. And so it's not going to be anything under the sun or in the pool of the NDC. Mm. Right. Now let's, let's look at Dr. Echo's view, Gabriel's response to uh, this campaign page for him on Facebook. He's mentioned the fact that he's dissociated himself from it. He's mentioned the fact that uh, he, he's minding his own business in Tunis where he is at the moment. Does, does that give some sort of relief for the call? Well, uh, clearly Dr. Ecosfield Dabra has indicated that he knows nothing about um, this group and his, his call. And therefore, that tells you that these are individuals, individuals who are obviously sitting across what they think. Um, I think that at, at a, when we are at the, at the political party, there is need for us to be very focused, and the need for us to, as it were, work effectively towards 2016 in order to maintain uh, our hold on governance of this country. Uh, and I think that the response of Dr. Ekospo Gabra is very much appropriate and a very, very, very refreshing uh, in that we know what is happening in some other political parties in Ghana, for instance, the NPP and the jostling for, uh, you know, positions and uh, uh, flag bearership, etc. We are very confident that uh, as NDC, we will be more focused. We currently have a leader who is in the person of His Excellency John Gamani Mahama, and indeed, we can confidently say that President Mahama is not doing badly, uh, uh, and, then, and that there is need for us as a party to really solidly rally behind the president in the realization of uh, the NDC's vision for this country, especially in the turbulent uh, economic times that we find ourselves, which is not very peculiar to Ghana, but is becoming or has become a worldwide challenge, economic challenge, mm. is a, a situation that uh, permeates the world over. But doesn't this call also suggest that some people within the party are unhappy with the current president? Not necessarily. I think that um, in every society or in every grouping, there are people with divergent opinions and views. Um, ours is a Congress, a Congress which indicates, therefore, that uh, is. Uh, you know, a collection of people with divergent opinions and backgrounds who believe in the same cause. And um, so therefore you can have people in the NDC who, you know, may have preferences uh, that may not be uh, safe, you know, um, and, and, and therefore you necessarily cannot say that they have been unhappy, they are unhappy with the president, the reason for that call. They have not really indicated clearly what uh, there are core reasons for which they want um, um, that type of people. But they, 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 they want like someone that. else for the NDC 2016. It could only mean that they are unhappy with perhaps uh, the administrative style of President Mahama. Well, again, you must also admit that uh, if you have, if you belong to a group and everybody likes you, then it means that indeed there is a problem. You will not have everybody liking you. You will not have everybody appreciating your star, 
because of the dynamics of the political party to which we belong. Uh, and therefore, uh, it should not surprise you that some people may want, you know, as it were, uh, some other person to lead a party. And I'm very confident that even from the very day, the very moment that um, um, Pre President Mahama uh, burst onto the scene as flag bearer, or even before that, there were some people who wouldn't necessarily would have had it, uh, other preferences, you know. So, I mean, it is, it's not strange, it is not strange mm. and it has not necessarily connoted uh, the fact that the president or the NDC-led administration is not doing, it's not doing well. I mean, everybody would not like everything about our mm. own party. R Richard. A, a, a few a few weeks back, perhaps I would have said uh, th there was the greater likelihood that President Mahama would be a lone ranger in the flag bearership race for the NDC in 2016. Now I can't say that, and I'm on the outside. You're on the inside. What do you see? Uh, clearly, we we have not announced, you know, um, the race for flag bearership. We we have not actually. Um, announced, um, you know, campaigning, uh, and so therefore I cannot necessarily see that there are people who be emerging to contest 2016. Our constitution is still undergoing a review, and until that review is concluded, we will not even be thinking of, you know, uh, opening the door, uh, opening uh, up for contest, etc., be it for national officers or even, um, you know, flag bearer. And so we haven't even gotten to the bridge yet um, uh, to even cross it. Uh, that is, we need, first of all, to get our officers, national officers, regional officers in place, and we prepare ourselves towards that. We are actually working very hard to actually um, enlarge or widen the scope of, um, you know, participation. Uh, that is through the biometric registration that is on ongoing. And when that is concluded and our constitution review committee also concludes its work and Congress endorses their work, then clearly we'll then proceed to elect national, regional and national offices as well as constituency. Then uh, we will now be thinking of flag bearership. So it is early this year. It will be very premature for one, you know, as it were to be talking about contesting or not contesting as to whether President Mahama will contest as a low raider, will go on the polls or not. Mm. I mean, but really but Richard, you can understand that when groups within the party come up to uh, nominate someone to go for the flag bearership race, it's only fair that uh, th th those of us in, in, outside of the party will begin to wonder if indeed President Mahama, Mahama will be a lone ranger uh, as far as the race for flag worship is concerned for 2016. But let's move away from that. Doc, Dr. Ekospio Gabra has also warned that the ruling NDC risks losing power in 2016 should the current administration fail. What's your view on this? Absolutely. Um, I would agree with him that if this current administration fail, and how would the current administration fail? Well, that is when we are unable to maintain the peace that that the people of Ghana are currently enjoying, where they are unable, as it were, to address some of the pertinent issues that confront us as a people, um, issues that obviously can be seen as one that should be dealt with. If those are not dealt with, then clearly you can say that uh, the NDC may not be really living up to expectation. But as matters currently stand, I think that the NDC still very much uh, has the, you know, the upper hand as far as the levers of um, uh, power uh, uh, is concerned um, as far as uh, you know the electric uh, appreciation of leadership is concerned the NDC still has the leverage uh, all that is left for the NDC to do is to be able to explain very vividly and very clearly in a very cogent and consistent manner to the Ghanaian people the kind of challenges that confront us you know, and the kind of steps that are being taken to address those challenges. And again, now, if you ask me, the population of Ghana, even when before the NPP, the, the before led administration took over, was 18 million. But today, we are 25 million. What it means, therefore, is that a lot more maps are out to be fed. And then what it therefore means, means is that a lot more young people have come up of age who will be looking for job or, or employment opportunities. And meanwhile, over the years, we have not been able to actually create job avenues proportional to 
the increase in population and all these things have it, I have to pressure so much pressure on government and again also we, we have not been over the years I mean that the successive government are all uh, blameable to understand you know being able as it were to turn around the situation where we can't focus more on home growing um, products rather than depending instead of depending on uh, foreign or imported products all these things have been cited negatively on um, the, um, the economy of the country as of now and because the NDC or the Muhammad administration is the, the, the group of people that find themselves in the cock swing a lot of people tend as it were to blame them but then the reality is that if you see that and do the critical uh, independent analysis and then you are able to explain these things to the Ghanaian people so just appreciate to show sure that people recognize that the Mahama administration is actually doing all it can, looking for ways and strategies, as it were, to really confront the, the ta economic challenge that the Ghanaian people are confronted but, with. But, Richard, that, that is why the NDC is in office. That is why the ND NDC told the Ghanaian people that we can do it. Just give us uh, the, the opportunity to do it. And we did. Now, the question is, uh, going into 2016, do you feel that the Ghanaian people, who may not necessarily be NDC uh, loyals, would, would still stump it for uh, President Mahama? Well, clearly, uh, I believe strongly that uh, the generality of the Ghanaian people who are not myopic will begin, will, should appreciate the kind of um, 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 situation that the nation finds itself in the community of nations. And clearly, what is, going, is happening in Ghana is not uh, uh, peculiar to just our country, like I mentioned earlier. It's a worldwide situation. And uh, we can proudly say that, in spite of the challenges, we are managing very clearly, very effectively uh, the situation such that we do not have, you know, uh, you know, uh, a surging of young people on the streets you know, demonstrating as is the case in a number of developing countries and a number of developed countries. And that is an indication that the Muhammad administration is actually performing. That is an indication that, um, you know, effective strategies are being adduced, as it were, to really, really share the effect of this nation. And it's like I indicated, it's a matter of people really, it's a matter of communication. It's a matter of getting these messages effectively across to people through all means of communication for them to really understand. So it, it, it is time for the NDC to be more engaging, engaging um, uh, the public. There should be that interface um, uh, for people to really appreciate their need, as it were, for various fora, as it were, to discuss the situation that we find out. These are the what is happening today in the world at large. And I believe strongly that people will tend to appreciate that the NDC indeed is living up to its promise. The NDC is not clean. I'm, I'm very confident that if it were not the NDC in government, it was it were some other political party, the situation would be more chaotic. The situation I see. That would be very, very bad. I see. Uh, we'll leave it here for now. Thank you very much, Richard. Richard Koshiga is Member of Parliament for Keta and also former Propaganda Secretary for uh, the. National Democratic Congress, the NDC. Now, to some of your messages on Facebook, well, uh, it has to do with the call on Ecos Pio Gabra and his response to the group that is campaigning for him on Facebook. Now, he says that uh, Ronald Diabua Fineboy says that is the truth and nothing but the truth. Why? Because all we are encountering today is not as a result of the president himself, but it is from ministers and some appointees from him that is making the country ungovernable for him just because of their selfish desire. So Dr. Ecos Fugabra is right with what he said. He should remember that a man's woes shall be from his own home. Savior Daku says NDC will not get it again because he, he, he disappointed us a lot. We have decided already waiting for 2016 and McDonald says it's most likely for sure. I'm not sure what you're saying, but let me move on to Agbati Georgina, who's, who's responding, well, uh, I'll move away from Ag Agbati and go to Janama Bien. It's difficult to accept the truth. Hard for him 2016. I can suffer like this and make a mistake again. Jesus said it's finished. 
Mohammed Musa uh, says NDC and JDM cannot only uh, be thinking of 2016. They should do the work well now before 2016. You always talk of 2016. You don't think about the hotness of the country. JDM, if you don't know, let me tell you. The youth is dying of hunger and you're always thinking of rules. Think of development, not 2016. Mahmoud Habib Jawula, it's too little, too late. Just because President Mohammed's performance can be described as abysmal and has betrayed the trust and hope of many Ghanaians, especially the poor in our society, who constitute bulk of his support base. Agbenu Reflection, youth completing school without job, the country is full of social vices after completing school. They will say you must have two to three years experience. Where do they want us to get the experience from? Is it from the classroom? And yet JDM's concentration is on 2016. Dankwa Albert says, with all due respect, doctor, help can only be offered to a capable team, not an incapable team as this, uh, well, I ended there. With Zom, Kluche says, really, Ghana needs fasting and prayers, but not criticizing precedents. When Jerry, Kofu, and Atta were in power, did they solve all the problems facing Ghana? And JDM came and brought the problems back? No. He meets the problems and will definitely, uh, he met the problems and will definitely leave those problems behind. Those are your comments on our Facebook page. I'm glad you sent them in. Keep them coming. When I return, we'll talk about how some very corrupt individuals at some of our state-owned institutions are contributing heavily to most of the accidents on our roads. I'll be right back. I'm glad you stayed on here on News Desk. My name is Kemini Nyamani Amano. Enormous rot has been discovered as the bane of the number of road crashes in the country. That's according to a latest expose by Ace Investigative Report, Anas Aremi Anas. From licensed racketeering to wanton corruption, Ghana's prime roads continue to suffer from a number of road accidents. Here are excerpts from Anas's show takers. My name is Anas Aremi Anas. Extreme diseases call for extreme remedies. If you are a bad guy, I'm about to knock on the door, and I can tell you, it is not nice. What you are about to see today is not pleasant. I would want to warn children under 18 years to desist from watching this film, because it will get bloody. We want to walk the streets of glory, shining around that song. Every day, a lot of people get disabled. Accidents result in serious fatalities and uh, serious disability. 17,000 road crashes in a year. The vehicle population is not up to 1.5 million. With its associated risks of disability, incapacity and death, road accidents threatens all of us. After an investigative meeting, my team and I decided to approach the situation from three different faces. How people acquire licenses at the DVLA and the killer fraud that surrounds it is the first on soul takers. We put the spotlight on the driver killers we are forced to share the roads with, a documentary that would be titled Doom. Somebody's carelessness. Are you trying to drive me away? We uncover corruption on the part of bad cops within the motor traffic and transport unit of the Ghana Police Service in bad cops. We 
decided to focus on one of the most critical institutions, the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority, DVLA, because it is the institution mandated by law to issue driver's licenses to qualified applicants. And the one I did for you, it was express. It didn't reach one. It's now getting to 11, almost 11.10. You can come around 1 o'clock or 12.45. We will make fake licenses. And then they're involved in an accident. And then the blame comes to, to us. Road race tickets is a printing document. People print fake this. Just as we have uh, fake malaria drugs. So faking is a major challenge. The Tiger Eye team wanted to know whether the corruption at DVLA could lead to people issuing licenses to a mentally deranged man, a market woman, and a physically challenged man. All these people have no clue about driving. At Tamale DVLA, we took a picture of this physically challenged man we met here at the Tamale Lorry Station. Nana Kwame, aka Nana Hotman, a very prominent license maker here at Tamale, agreed to help us. I don't want to guess, but it will take more than one week. He directed us to pay a full sum of 300 Ghana cities to his lieutenant. In less than a week, the license was ready. He met us to deliver the license of Wakil Kudus, her physically challenged friend who could not drive and knew next to nothing about driving. Madam, you like love? With 300 Ghana cities, we got a license for a physically challenged person who is unable to drive. We met this other mentally deranged man at Medina Market. Considering the rate at which licenses were being given without verification, we decided to test the system again. We might be caught. That is, if the officials at the DVLA are not just focused on money, but the safety of Ghanaians. We proceeded to present his picture to test whether a license could be done for him. We met this hard-working man at the place noted to be the heartbeat of licensing operations in the country, the DVLA headquarters here at 37. We told Billy that the man we have named Bilatia John was an uncle who needed a license to apply for a visa. How much is this? 1.55. When I come in there, I take the 100. You take time. Now you are going to program everything into the computer. Feed it, then make sure the reprint is correct. You can come around one o'clock or twelve forty five. When you come you come to the eye test and pick my number zero two four two six four six six two two Billy D I double L Y. I hope I should bagnate it. It will show that maybe they've issued it to him for about a year. Okay. Or how do you see it? Oh, well, you can oh, issue it instantly. Then you go to the embassy. They can ask you that when did you come to Ghana and it was issued for you oh, maybe. Oh, yeah. So I have to do it that maybe he has been using it for one oh, year. Oh, yeah. You understand? Okay. okay. And it works that way. After negotiations, we agreed on 250 Ghana cities. We made a down payment of 150 Ghana cities and got assurances from Billy that a license would be ready in days. Days later, we paid 100 Ghana cities and picked Bilatia John's license. Yeah, Billy, a design. You check how much how much you have fake license in the bino. I was DVL at the same. Ah, okay. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. A bit three days, two days. I remember. Three days, three days, three days. I never thought. Me, me, who evidence we are just why you be a movie two days, three days. That only a bit a movie other.
All Mr. Abu needed to process a license for a mentally deranged applicant were the name, the date of birth, the name, the date of birth, the name, the date of and four hundred Ghana cities. We agreed and paid three hundred Ghana cities up front. I expect it. Okay. A few days later, we met Mr. Abu under a tree near the DVLA offices. He took his 100 Ghana cities balance and delivered Jakub Stimaya's license. <laughs> mentally deranged men on the streets of Ghana with licenses. So as you can see, it is how much you can pay for a license that matters. With mental patients, a market woman and a physically challenged person, all having licenses without having any knowledge of driving and more importantly, without their consent, one could imagine the rot and fraud that is being perpetrated within the licensing division of the DVLA. Meanwhile, there are qualified applicants who have applied for licenses for months, some for years, but are yet to get their licenses delivered. Right, uh, you can watch the full investigative piece here on Joy News at 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. Uh, today. But I have over the telephone uh, Director of Training and Research at the uh, Motor Traffic and Transport Department of the Ghana Police Service, DSP Alexander Obeying. DSP, thank you very much for joining me here on News Desk. Thank you very much. We'll do this quickly, DSP. A and, and so th th this is what happens and it brings your work to naught. What, what are your reactions to this? Um, I think uh, when it comes to the yeah, and uh, the implications, I think it was a consensus in the crowd to uh, give the expose that the stakeholders need to do more to ensure that whatever is deletion, whatever the systemic challenges that there is, be it corrupt, be it uh, issues that were raised by Azumiya uh, and all that, uh, should be tackled head on in order to have a system that the rule law is um, uh, in this thing. And therefore, what is your concern? It's a positive step. Issues that concern DVA, issues that concern the traffic police, and all that, are to be tackled head on and dealt with. It is has to do with human uh, records that are posing challenges. Mm. But you, 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 you do, you do okay, realize, yes, we, we do not have time, yes. so let, let me just uh, back in quickly. You do realize that it means that it's time for a, a, a change of the game plan. A, a change for? For, for the game plan, the way we are going about to ensure safety on our roads. It yeah, that's what I'm saying that we need, if, it, if somehow uh, it has to do with the human being, then of course, uh, all of us have to encourage DVA. And if it has to do with police, to bring more, uh, uh, what do you call, ICT system that will support. Like now, you go to DVA, a system that they are put in place over time will ensure that. Human intervention will be eliminated almost completely. Close. But but you, as as uh, the, the traffic men on the road, and and those who visit our, our lorry stations to check, to make sure that the drivers are doing the right thing, 
What what are you doing in 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 terms of tweaking your your game plan? We still have some lorry stations where uh, pubs are either within the station or close by, and and we can, we, we we can dare say that some of the drivers get drunk. Oh, well, the issue of uh, drunkenness or the uh, opinion of other substances that we say addiction and judgment of travel uh, bar is an issue that needs to be tackled holistically. All we are looking, we're looking at only where uh, drinking bars and pubs are located. That, that, that may not be proper because a driver can even bring it from home and it be uh, in a car as he moves along. So the issue has to do with what regulations do you have to play that check of If they are not there, it becomes sometimes difficult for you to do from what is important to uh, the rule of engagement is that. Like we did practically, Police to liaise with local police where these lorry parts are should liaise with the uh, transport of prisoners. We ask them when to go there and do pre-trip checks on drivers and vehicles that they did at uh, Kwanishi near lorry park before it started. I got personally got a driver who was drunk because he tested 0.136% uh, percent on the replizer in, uh, instead of 0, 0.00 and all that. And he was caught drunk and was arrested. I think these are some of the issues that we need to tackle. Again, we thought that one area that will help to enhance enforcement with regard to the rules has to be bringing in uh, certain devices, enforcement devices that will assist the police and systems like what's fine. So these are some of the things. Uh, like, like, like you said, we've known about uh, this problem even before the expose came out. But I don't get the impression that the MTTD was doing anything uh, in its bid to, to help the situation. Oh, no, 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 no. So far, you know, the traffic police is also part of the general police setup we have in the country. And therefore, it just pertaining to corrupt practices and torsion and, and the tension of police image uh, is being tackled holistically by police administration. I don't think that's what the subject was to discuss now. Otherwise, that we are vigorously pursuing it as an administration. Alongside it, but the traffic police is also looking for ways that to ensure that uh, the public gets a better uh, traffic policing service from the personnel. And that is already putting more systems in place, like having devices, training them, getting See, devices. See, the, the, the yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that if your men are by the roadside and a driver pulls up, with a fake driver's license and uh, you know e everything about that driver does not show that this person can handle the car he, uh, he or she is having perhaps doesn't know uh, some road signs does not understand you know from the interaction with 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 the officer you realize that the person's demeanor is not of that of one who knows uh, his way about then, then in that case, the MTTD indeed has a role to play. My thing is, I, I don't get the feeling from you that indeed the, the MTTD knows that there are fake licenses. But all we keep hearing is oh. the MTTD collects uh, licenses from people. What do we do about situations like this when someone, you, you realize someone has a fake license? Well, that, oh, as for the difference between a genuine and a fake license, there are so many instances that uh, the DVLA has issued us with some not uh, adequate numbers, but numbers of, uh, well, there are few anyway, of uh, license detectors that are issued to traffic officers that assist them in some way. Also, when they suspect is they are very high because of the training that giving them, to, they are looking out for certain security marks. I'm not sure. Mm. Uh, 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 they that that and and, and apply to DVLA. Well, DSV, uh, we'll, we'll continue our conversation later. Unfortunately, we'll have to end it here. But I believe there's a lot more to, to talk about. Thank you very much. DSV Alexander Obey is Director of Training and Research with uh, uh, MTTD of the Ghana Police Service. On Facebook, Abu Bakar Mohammed says the corrupt officials must be put behind bars. I'm totally grateful you stay through News Desk. I'll see you again at midday on News Today. Don't forget at 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. today here on News, on News, Joy News, yeah, there will be a repeat broadcast of the Soul Takers, the investigative piece that exposes the rot in our system.
that is causing a lot of road crashes and carnages on our roads. My name is Kemeni Nyamani Amana. Goodbye.